Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. On today's video I have this uh, Mercedes S350 Bluetech. So this is an S-Class, the W221 uh, um, 2012. And basically I'm gonna be changing the oil and the oil filter as well as uh, checking the coolant uh, level and amount of antifreeze and also I will be topping up some uh, screen wash fluid um, and topping that up now uh, this car takes uh, let's have a look at the manual here and we'll just find I already had a look at this but this car basically takes uh, 8 liters of oil and that is written somewhere here if I can just find the okay uh, here we have on the engine oil technical uh, specifications um, diesel engines so this is a diesel engine here it shows you the type of oil that you can use also they recommend uh, if you haven't got these ones they say you can use ACEA A3 for petrol engines and the C3 for diesel engines so today I have a Castrol 5W30 C3 and also here um, model S350 Bluetech that's the one um, I have here this is the S350 Bluetech 4 Matic um, they both in, even this one as well and the S300 they take 8 liters of oil the S350 and the 354 Matic 250 CDI takes 6.5 and well so on the other ones there also you have the uh, little chart there for the viscosity I'm using like I said 5w30 um, that ranges a good um, um, temperatures um, for where I am obviously if you're in a very cold country you want to choose maybe thinner slightly thinner viscosity if you're in a very hot country maybe you want to go a little bit higher into the 10w30 10w40 so with that said, I got my filter here as well. That's the oil filter there that I'm using. It's a Hengst um, E71H D141. But obviously, check with your suppliers, make sure you get the correct oil filter for your car. Now, um, to access the, the filter, we have to just lift this cover up. But first, I'm going to top up the screen wash fluid, and the screen wash fluid on this car goes in there, where that blue cap is. And you can buy screen wash fluid from any garage or petrol station, um, ready mixed, or you can get the concentrated one and mix it yourself. But I definitely don't recommend just putting water in here. Um, if you only put water in there, it will freeze during uh, winter if it's minus something, and then it won't come out, and it, you won't be able to clean your your windscreen. Um, and also, don't don't put any um, stuff like uh, fairy liquid or any any washing up liquid because it also freezes and also it becomes a bit of a jelly type of thing in there and it blocks the jets so just use the proper stuff okay with that done we can move on to checking the uh, coolant level 
and also the percentage front freeze. So the coolant will be in this tank here. And uh, just open this cup carefully, especially if uh, the car has been running and it's hot. Um, just to release the pressure a little bit. Always be a little bit careful with it. Um, now we are aiming for the level to be along with this line here where the, where the black top of this tank meets the clear uh, cover. So it's a reference there. That's where we want it to be uh, level-wise. And the, in terms of uh, antifreeze percentage, we can use one of these uh, gadgets to measure it. So we just uh, wait for it to settle there. Okay, so that's just settled at around uh, minus 25. If we can just uh, see that there. Or, well, really minus 20, around 27. Which means the temperature will have to drop below minus 20, 25, 27 in order for that to freeze. So that is a good percentage of antifreeze and if I shine it's a bit difficult to see in this uh, from this angle really but uh, basically we have as I was saying the level we want it to be around here you can already tell that there is uh, liquid in there because if there wasn't liquid here, this would be uh, quite transparent. And also, if you look in there, you can see the liquid. And now the thing is, uh, this particular uh, container goes uh, sort of up here. So, if you see it from here, it kind of goes up. So we want it to be in line with this level here, not, not this level here. So you can see uh, the level is more or less in line with that there. Now, um, the concerning part would be if you didn't have any coolant in there, more than anything else. If, uh, if you're a little bit below there or a little bit higher, that's not um, an issue. The issue would be really mainly if there was no coolant in there, then uh, you would need to find out why. So I'm happy with that. The color of the antifreeze is is uh, nice and clear. The little gadget also shows you the color and it shows you that it's not contaminated or it's not got oil or anything like that. Um, so I'm ha happy with the percentage of antifreeze, the level, and it's fairly clean. So with that said, we can move on and uh, I'm going to move on to doing the oil and the oil filter. And like I said, for that, we're going to take this cover out. Just put it to one side. And then um, our oil will be in there. Our oil filter, I mean, will be in there. That was a little bit too big. Okay, so I don't have I don't have the correct size of one of these to open the oil filter housing there, um, that cover. So I'm going to use that wrench there. Luckily this uh, filter is sitting in a position where we can use this. 
uh, and normally these are not that tight. They're only tight into 25 newton meters. So it should be fairly easy to open. Now there will be oil in there, so once you open it, we can always uh, let it sit there for five minutes or so, just uh, so that oil can drain down, otherwise you'll be dripping oil everywhere. So we let it uh, drip and uh, drain a little bit, in the meantime we can just prepare by opening the oil filler cap here just leave it just sitting there and also just gonna get that dipstick out all of those things will allow some air to get into the engine while we drain the oil from underneath um, and it will drain a little bit faster so if you're working outside I would recommend um, if you take this cover out try to put maybe a little bit of paper or something on top of that and also once you remove the filter that hole there also cover it with a rag or something uh, just so dust that or leaves or anything doesn't go in there okay so I'm gonna remove that and now I'm going to get the car up and we can drain the oil from underneath. While the oil is draining, we'll prepare our filter. So looking at the car from underneath, we want to remove some 8mm uh, bolts. These little ones here. There is, uh, I think there is 7 of them. So we can lower this 7 or 8 actually. Actually maybe 8 of them. We want to lower, uh, take this cover off. And that will give us access to the sump down here. And I've got my sump plug bolt just sitting there. It's a 13 mil. and so we can drain the oil so make sure you get yourself an oil pan to catch the oil okay so get yourself a 13 mil and uh, one of these and we can open that sump plug there <coughs> And just remember, if the engine's been running, the oil can be very hot. So just be careful not to burn yourself when you let this oil out. In this case, um, it's just warm. I warmed it up a bit, but I didn't uh, drive it a lot. So, while the oil is draining, we can uh, prepare our filter here. <clears throat> so it's just a matter of taking this uh, filter out, just pulling it out like so. Gonna dispose of that. It's gonna give this a little wipe here. And then we can remove this o-ring your new filter will come with a new o-ring that white one there and this little one here and that little one here is this one here ok 
Okay. <clears throat> Now, get the uh, new o-ring there, and the little one goes in here. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, multi-purpose grease along this o-ring here. You can use a little bit of oil as well. Just a little bit there. That will just allow <coughs> the O-ring to slide uh, and accommodate nicely when we fit this back in. Now get your new filter and just push it all the way in. Now that's ready to be fitted, and uh, some plug bolt is here. That's the old copper washer. I got a new copper washer here. Uh, it's a little bit bigger here. The surface is a little bit bigger, but the hole is the same. So that fits quite nicely in there. And we can fit this back now. You may notice I have a coffee and a Snickers bar in there. Just to keep me happy. Now, <clears throat> this has been dripping for quite some time because I went to have some lunch, so I left it. Uh, I left it dripping for quite a long time. This can be tightened to around 15 newton meters, between 15 and, and 18, I think they recommend. But we are just basically creating a seal between the the sump uh, and this bolt with the copper washer. And then we can just make sure this is nice and clean. Now, this area down here looks a little bit wet because I had an, um, a leak from the... I had a fuel leak, basically, coming from the top. Uh, a mouse or a rat, something, ate the fuel hoses and as a, as a result I had diesel coming down everywhere. So I removed... Um, so obviously I had to remove this cover and I also removed earlier on the, the back cover this one here because there was also diesel on it and I gave them both a good wash while all of this was out so now we can uh, lower the car put the cover back in here just a few 8 mil volts and lower the car and then we can top up some oil okay so looking at the car from up here we have um, Obviously the oil filter housing there, and I got my oil filter all nice and ready here. So just put it in by hand as much as you can, make sure it's going in the correct direction, and then if you have the proper socket use the socket that goes up here um, and it says 25 newton meters in there and that isn't a lot of force so just don't over tighten this housing this cover okay with that done we can top up some oil. And as already stated, 
this car takes 8 liters and I have my 5W30 C3 here for diesel Okay, so I got my 8 litres in there. Now um, we can close this and we can actually have a look at the dipstick. Now, if you check the dipstick here. The dipstick has two marks. One that reads max up here and minimum down here. So we wanna be, obviously we're gonna be at the max and probably we might be a little bit above the max if I check it now. And that's because after we run the engine, some of the oil will go into the oil filter housing so like I said this here is the minimum this bit and this up here is the max just by the edge there min and max and uh, if you were checking the oil halfway through the year or something you find yourself in the minimum area you wanna top up a little bit right let's see where we are at Okay, so this oil is just, uh, it's not all the way down yet, obviously, because uh, I just put it in. But you can almost see that it's already quite at the max area there. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm just going to start the car now. Let's make sure it's running, everything is running okay. And that's pretty much it, so the car sounds uh, pretty sweet, as it usually does. Um, and that's pretty much it, we finished with that job. Um, so don't forget to subscribe. On my next video I'm going to be changing the, uh, the air filters, which is something I just uh, I didn't get today because it didn't arrive. So I'll be doing um, those air filters. Um, so for now, I hope this video helps, don't forget to subscribe and uh, thank you for watching.